Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Moran and this is the place where I share my crochet object knitting journey, all my joyful makings and creative adventures. And recently I also include a personal update from the War Days in Israel. But today I decided to leave this week's episode on the creative side out of I think mostly selfish reasons I just discovered from previous episodes that speaking about my knitting and crochet sharing here my knitting and crochet adventures it's it's kind of a lift me up thing for me so I will try to keep it that way uh, for this week's episode. Today's Wednesday and it's raining pretty heavily. I hope it will not get too noisy here in the studio. And it's pretty cold, even colder here in this studio space. So I'm wearing my muscle brew hat to keep me warm. And I also wear a pair of woolly cozy weekend socks, the ones I shared last week, the ones I just finished knitting last week. And I have a few things to share with you today. I wanted to first update you with a um, green drawer announcement. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. I want to update you with a second bunny donation bono bunny donation we placed i have some knitting and crochet and test crochet to speak about and also to share what arrived in the mail so i think we can start i let's start with the donation so we can clear it out of the table so because last week i forgot to share about it but earlier last week Al and myself we placed the second donation to the Brothers in Arm organization. So I'm not sure if you um, if you are new here. Uh, first, on when it all started after the seventh, the brutal attack on October seventh, I came out with this bunny pattern and I called him the Bono Bunny. Um, after Bono from U2, I spoke about it on previous episodes and I decided that all the incomes from this pattern both on Etsy on and on Ravelry will be donated to the Brothers in Arms organization uh, which Ayal and myself donate to anyway so we decided to add this as a donation as well this was my little way to support my community after this brutal attack and after every, what everything that has happened thanks to you i could place the second donation so i just wanted to update you so thank you to each and every one of you who purchased this pattern and um, yeah i'm very grateful you allowed me to go on this action of supporting my community my local community the bono bunny pattern is still available on etsy and ravelry and i don't know how long i will keep it a donation pattern but for now it is still a donation pattern whenever it comes to a realistic i think um, um how do you say number of of what i can donate i will place the donation and i will update you here so this is regarding our bono bunny donation yeah let's move on to the green drawer announcement so a few days ago i announced on instagram that i am selling out my granny kit cotton stock and i i think i shared it i think more than twice here on youtube and i shared why i do that and how i will um, continue from here but i got so many messages dms emails etsy conversations asking me um, questions about this announcement so i thought to come here sit and try to answer the most asked questions so 
if any of you have another or if someone is contacting me via DM or email, I can direct him here to this episode to get all the answers. So what I did, I opened like a no I opened a note on my iPhone and the note is the green drawer announcement. And I placed all your most asked questions and I will go through them one by one and we'll try to answer all your questions clear and quick. I'm not very good with quick, but let's give it a try. So first question, will you stop selling the granny kit cotton for good? So the answer for it is yes, but I will probably have a shop update during later this year on 2024 uh, with with kits so I might do like a pre-order in a, two months or something like that for the stripes and colors blanket and if I have enough yarn and if I can have all the colors in stock I will also have a pre-order for the love garden blanket I place them here to share them with you later Anyway, you will not have any more the option to choose your colors and, you know, go um, have all the hundred of number, hundred of colors in stock and choose from them. Why you stop selling your cotton? So I think I already shared it, but let me make it clear. Uh, there are a few reasons, but mainly, let's say first, because this activity in my one man, one woman business is not providing me with so much joy. Not as it used to be when I just started to sell cotton. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of, it's, it's a commitment and, you know, managing the stock and making sure you always have all the colors. So this is the main reason. I, I don't feel... I have the, the same kind of happy energy I had when I once, uh, once started selling cotton. And also, I think you already know, it's all over the place. Supply, supplies are getting harder and harder and getting a good quality cotton is not easy. I purchased my granny kit cotton collection out of three different suppliers. It has, the yarn has the same specifications and I worked for years in the textile industry. I know how to test a yarn. I know how it is, um, the quality it, it has. And this is a very high quality cotton, which is getting harder and harder to, to find. So in most cases, I have part of the colors in stock and part of them are not in stock, part of them will come later, part, part of them are, the, the supplier says it will come on February, but eventually it March and April and the yarn didn't arrive yet. So I feel tired of all of this and I feel that it's getting really hard and too expensive uh, to, to, to have a good quality cotton. And so I decided to, why to fight on it? In general, I think my, the whole like perception, I don't know if I say the right word, my perception, perception regarding life in general, if it's too hard, don't go for it. You don't, if you have to fight for it too hard. So this is what I felt. I felt I have to fight for it. I have, I felt I have to fight for managing the stock, making sure I have all the colors from the kits and uh, uh, and if I don't have a specific color to take care, I have a substitute color. But as you know, I'm very like sensitive with colors. So if I choose a specific color to work in this specific place, in this specific stripe, in the blanket, this is the place it needs to be. And this is its place and this is the color needs to be there. So in some cases I can feel okay with substi substituting the color, but 
it's all, not always very easy. So yeah, I, uh, this is why I decided to, to, to stop with it. Also, you know, the, the um, like packaging time, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of energy, it's a lot of, it's, in, it's an investment in all levels. And so for me, making like maybe one or two times a year, I can keep here kits. If, it's, if it goes well, I can do that. I can, you know, open a pre-order, see what is the level of the demand and work according to this. Next question, how can I purchase what's left in stock? So the simple and only way you can purchase what is left in stock is to contact me via Etsy conversation. I always have an updated list of everything that has left in stock. I send it to you. And if you're quick enough to respond, you will send me back the list you want and I will pack it and I'll send you a special listing. I'll pack it and send it to you. The only thing you have to keep is to keep a minimum order of 21 balls. Uh, actually, I have two options, 21, a, a pack of 21 balls and a pack of 24 balls. Next question, will you be offering another yarn instead? No. Next question, are you going to close your Etsy shop? No. Will you be offering the cotton, the granny kit cotton again in the future? So this question I already answered. I will be offering in kits. To be honest, the, I, I believe it will be only two or maybe three kits. I have, let me bring the blanket. These two, these two blankets are the most like the best selling kit. Uh, the stripes and colors is the best seller on my Etsy shop. So this kit includes 24 balls. And the Love Garden is also a best selling kit <coughs> in my Etsy shop. And the Love Garden blanket It's a little bit bigger. They are, I think they both like a throw size, you know, with cotton, cotton is heavy. So I don't usually recommend that you, um, that you make yourself like a king size cotton blanket. It's too heavy, make, like with this kind of yarn. So um, it's more like a throw size, but the Love Garden is bigger. So the Love Garden kit includes 35 balls. So at the moment, I think I might do, I might restock these two kits towards April or around this time of the year. Not 100% sure, but this is what I can see. Uh, one of you asked me on Etsy, where can I purchase this kind? Where can I purchase it after you stop selling it? And to be honest, I, I purchased my cotton, as I said, from three different suppliers and it's my own brand. So I collect the cotton from the three different suppliers and I label it with my own brand, Granny, Granny Kit Cotton. This is the name I chose for it years ago, together with my friend. Um, so unfortunately, you cannot buy this specific brand anywhere else but you can find something really similar in the market. This cotton is four ply, sport weight. It's 100% mercerized, pure Pima Egyptian cotton. So there are, some people will not like the mercerized, you know, thing, but this is the, this is the yarn. And I, I think there are quite a lot of four ply, sport weight cotton in various colors in the markets, you, you will have to look for something similar. Maybe one day I will, you know, sit on my blog and uh, put a replacement of one of the brands uh, for any of my kits. Anyway, this is what I plan with my cotton. This is 
uh, about the green drawer announcement. I really like it. It was like it came out of the, like in Hebrew you say, out of my sleeve. I said, I took a picture of the green drawer, of the green cotton drawer, which I really love, you know, green. Uh, I really, really love greens. And um, I took a picture and I wanted to share it with you on Instagram. And I said, and I just wrote, green drawer announcement because in the past i shared a lot of times the green green drawer picture and i said the green drawer situation at the moment so this is where it came from and um, so it was funny so thank you so much for you know letting me know you love the cotton so much so i hope we will be able to have it again in the shop but not all the year occasionally, maybe once or twice a year. So yeah, this is about this um, thing I wanted to share. And now we can start talk about knitting. Yeah, let's go for the fun stuff. Um, last week I shared that I, I thinking of casting on a new muscle brew head for myself because I use it so much. And I received in the mail um, a new color from the same yarn I used from my first muscle brew head. So it's the Jensen yarn by Sager. It's 100% wool, 100 grams and 250 meters per skein. And I ordered two of these and you wanted to know um, what is the name of the color I used for this, for my head, for, and for what's the name of the color that uh, I ordered, the new color. So I wrote it to myself. Of course, the new color, it's in, on the label. It's 8S. Eight, <coughs> eight <S. coughs> Sorry. The color name is 8S, and the color name is brown, I think. Can you see it? And let's see, I wrote it to myself, Master Brew Head. The original was knitted with 06S light beige. And both of them were purchased in a Finnish shop named TTTYYY. It's, an, it's a shop we uh, order from uh, quite a lot and we share the shipping cost together here, the knitters in the knitting clubs here. So on Saturday, I, I think it was Saturday, maybe it was Friday evening that I decided to cast on this head, the, the second one, using uh, the new color. By the way, I purchased, I ordered two skeins because I use one full skein and a little bit of the other one. This year, as you know, I have my a making journal, my yellow making journal, so I will write exactly the weight I will weigh the yarn and I will know exactly how much yarn I used but I know for sure that I will use the second skein I don't know I think it was less than third of the skein or something like that but I will keep you posted so I answered you regarding what color it is I think it was Friday evening or maybe Saturday that I cast on on uh, 5 dpns but Usually I prefer the crochet cast on for this set. So I think that I think that's what I did here but when I when one of the knitters here in my knitting clubs um, start to knit the muscle brew head and we all knit the muscle brew every uh, like in every given moment there is a, one of the knitters knit the muscle brew head and I usually <clears throat> help them to cast on using the crochet method. The thing is that I'm a left-handed crocheter and a right-handed knitter. So for me, in order to start it with a crochet magic loop, I need to get some help. So I need one of the knitters in one of the knitting clubs helping me with the crochet, you know, the first round of crochet, and then I can, you know, go on and start making knitting my head but what I decided to do this time I discovered <coughs> there is sorry <laughs> I discovered there is quite a good very good 
uh, tutorial by N Natalie from Nitty Natty here on YouTube, where she showed in a very detailed and closed up uh, video how she cast on the muscle brew head using the crochet method. And I said, you know what? Even though I'm a left-handed, let's give it a try. Let's, I, I just play her video tutorial on a slow-mo, like on a slow, you know, you can adjust the speed of the video. So I made it slower and I just followed her hands how she crochet the first round, how she cast on using the crochet method. And I did it with my right hand and I was very proud. So I cast on, I was so happy. And then I moved it, moved the stitches to four DPNs and started to knit all the increases until I reached, until I had, uh, you know, a little bit more than one inch and I could measure gauge and I used the same yarn and used the same needles I knitted on a 3.75 millimeter so I achieved the same gauge so I knew I will make the same size and the same um, I will have to go up for x number of stitches on each of my segments on each of my uh, DPN double pointed needles so I made all the increases until I reached uh, the right number of stitches for my size. Look how pretty is this and how delicate this custom looks. I really, really like this detail and you know, you know me, details are making me. So, and I really like these uh, increasing lines. Uh, so yeah, I knitted it and then when I had enough yarns, I moved all my stitches to work on a, on a circular needles. I used my circular, circular needles out of my interchangeable Chiago set. My set is with four inch tips, four inch long, which make it very easy when you come out to knit a hat or maybe even a, a sleeve, because, you know, it's, I don't know, if you tried, you know what I'm talking about. So I moved it to my 16 inch, 40 centimeters needle and started to knit, placed this cute stitch market marker. I think I purchased many of them for the knitters here from Rebecca's room. So yeah, it changed the color. I think it got like oxidized. I don't know how you say it. Anyway, this kind, like this project is, uh, by the way, the Muscle Brew Hat is a pattern available on Ravelry, very, very popular one. And it's a pattern by Isolda Tig. And for me, it's, like the perfect perfect work for now you know it's a plain knitting knitting in the round knit in stockinate stitch so you knit 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 all the stitches after you reach the number of stitches you need for your size for the size that you knit you just need to you know keep knitting in the round and i really really enjoy it i it's exactly what i need at the moment so yeah, this is where I am with my muscle brew hat. And I think I made quite a lot of progress on my um, coziest memory blanket. And first I just want to show you every time I leave it aside, I fold it this way, like, like an accordion. And I really love it, it brings me so much joy to look at it this way. It looks like a paint. So this week I continued working on the ninth row. I think last time I shared it last week, I was um, knitting this square. And then I 
continue adding. I think most of the colors here are from the Row 1 December pack. So I have a Row 1 monthly sub subscription, which I share with the knitters here. Sometimes they like the colors that arrive and sometimes they don't like the colors, but if they like, we share the package. And I want to show you this one, this square is made out of, like I knitted this part out of a Weta yarn that I had here in the studio. And then I switched to a dark blue I had in my row one, one of the packages. I don't remember if from this month or from last packages, you know, past packages. Anyway, in this square, I made a stripe using two colors. So this is one yarn. I think this is from the row one or maybe one that was purchased by Ona in Loop London. And then I striped it with this yarn, which this is for sure from the December pack of row one. Not all of the colors from all the from the packages every month go into my blanket, but that's totally fine. I like to have, you know, leftover yarns for other projects or for other knitters or for scrappy socks or whatever. I will find what to do with them. Anyway, I think I added like eight colors from last week. Yeah, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more to go until I finish the row number nine. completely in love with this project and still reach out for it whenever um, adding adding a square as I as I shared last week no news for me for I think um, at least maybe like two weeks uh, I don't turn the TV on I want to I, I don't want to have like the news session of afternoon evening news session uh, but anyway, it sits, it goes with me whenever I, wherever I go at home and I always like to pick it up and add a square. So this was the next knitting project and I have another like a crochet project. I just wanted to have your advice if possible. Last week I shared with you that, let's make some space here, everything is all packed here. Um, and I also like to keep my computer turned on just to get some light out of it. Yeah. Uh, so last week I shared with you that I'm thinking of adding uh, into my granny square, my soft rose granny squares blanket. I think to add a, some of the squares with yarn, um, hand dyed wool with a different shade of pink or pink in the pinkish family uh, for the two first rounds and then I thought maybe to add it to the blanket here and there but maybe uh, but I will have to lay it down and to and to decide maybe I will make one plain soft rose square and one with this additional color first of all thank you so much for letting me know you like it it was lovely to hear that most of you like the, this idea. I think I prefer to have also this kind of add some interest into my blanket. But I went to my stash and looked for all the pinks. And listen, I don't know if all the pinks can work here because this, this soft rose is a little bit dusty or how do you say in English? Smoked. It's a little bit more kind of smoked color. I don't know why, but I feel this smoky or foggy kind of pink 
it limits me in, in, in adding another kind of pink. But let's see, I will put it in the, on the screen here for you. And I need your advice. To be honest, in many cases where I come here and share with you things and then I, can, I see them while editing, I see them on the screen, I feel like I, I get an, another opportunity to look at the, at the things, to look at my work with a fresh eye, like with different kind of with different eye. I don't know how to say it correctly, but in Hebrew we say in different eye. I think that I look at it differently and I can judge it differently, not as if it's my own creation. But I will be very happy if I can get your advice. Do you think this kind of pink can work here or this kind of pink can work here next to this more like I don't know how to call this maybe it's a mauve mauve color and this is more pink you know what they look quite good together but I will be happy to hear your um, to hear your uh, thoughts about this look at this one this is a very like I think it's an old one I have in my stash. It's from the Woolly Mammoth hand dyed wool. I really, really like Emma's colors. Really, really love them. It's more like a rustic wool. So for me, it's a perfect solution to like to use this yarn here because it's too rustic for my skin sensitivity but I really love the colors. So yeah, I, I made a few like small square, I, I made a few more squares, you know, uh, the, the soft rose granny squares. If you are interested, I have a full tutorial of how to make these squares here on my YouTube channel. And this week I added, I think two, maybe, yeah, I think two. And I also added a few of these tiny little ones to check how will they look like uh, if I combine them into my blanket. So let me know what you think. I think this is it about all the makings that I wanted to share. Let's go and see what arrived in the mail. So I told you last week that we all of the all of the knitters here, really all of them here in my knitting clubs. Uh, they really want to crochet my new my new scarf. And by the way, thank you so much for helping me understand if to say edging or framing or border. And you said every option is okay. So thank you for your help. Uh, and this week, I um, on Sunday, which is for us the first working day, I prepared a test copy for my weekly knitters so they can come and each of the girls if each of the knitters receive the test pdf for me a test copy and they could start making their own sunny scarves to be honest i have them they are already here i already made three of them i think i already shared them all of them with you I have the short version and I made two of the long version, one with the border and one without. So one, just the border that is uh, made as you crochet. And this border you add after you finish to crochet the, the main scarf, the body of the scarf. So why I uh, I started with this. First, I just had to really hold my horses not to wear this one today. I will. I might add a picture here. I sent it to to a friend before recording this episode. I really wanted to wear the short one, but I think it's too early. It's it's still on the testing, you know, on the testing step so i will have to wait a little bit until i show it for so long in in the episode 
Anyway, the knitters here ordered more cashmere from Tzvika and Yulia from Yarn, the, the yarn shop I visited a few weeks ago, and it just arrived. We, I received, everything arrived here in the studio, and I received a few boxes like this. It looks very luxurious, and it is luxurious <laughs> indeed. It's Cardiff boxes, and we received the cashmere we ordered. I want to show you my portion in this um, order. Maybe two of them just are not mine, but I ordered three colors this time. So I ordered this pink and the light marling beige and the dark brown. Let me show them to you one by one. Yeah already a very long one episode but it is what it is so this is the light gray and if you didn't watch my previous episode this is the cashmere that i uh, made my sunny scarves out of so this is a pattern that i think to publish more towards the spring so the short one is made out of one ball of this cashmere and the long version is made out of about one and a half without the border. The border is, you can use a different yarn. Anyway, this, this is classic Kashmir by Cardiff. This color is 670. It's 25 gram per ball with 112 meters. So this is the light beige and this is the pinkish one, more like dusty, antique pink, maybe purpley pink. And this color is 603. And the third color that I ordered and I can't wait to use is this dark brown one. 676 this is the name of the color and I already regret that I ordered to myself only two because I think I want for sure to have the sunny scarf for myself in this color but I also have another like development new design in my head that I would like to use it as well so I will have to choose what to do with it before I close the box let's Enjoy this for a moment. Yeah, so this is what arrived in the mail. Um, last episode I offered you, if you would like to test, to test crochet my new uh, scarf, my sunny scarf, and a few of you reached out via email and also here on the comment section uh, and yeah so i think i wrote back to two of you i only need to test crochetters at the moment because i have quite a lot of lo locals uh, crochetters that will test my new scarf pattern but anyway i will be happy that the, the two of you will um test crochet my scarf thank you so much for offering it uh, and if you would like the test copy of my PDF file of the pattern is ready to be sent to you. So if I answered you via email and told you once the copy for the testers is ready, I will get back to you. If you want to help me and make my life easier, please email back to me. I heard you have the test copy ready and I will send it to you, back to you, so you can test it. And no rush, because it, first it's a very, very quick project to work on. I don't know how, I don't want to tell you how long it took me to finish one, because I don't want to put you under pressure. It's a very quick project, and you don't have to use, to, to use cashmere. You can use whatever you have in stash and see how it works, but it's a very quick one, and I hope it will be published more towards the springtime. For us in Israel, 
you know, in, with the winter we have here in Israel, it's totally uh, an item for the winter as well. One of the knitters, she wear it la on the last knit night and she said, you know, it's, it's totally make the job. I, it keeps me really warm and it really it feels good on uh, around my neck and it's completely a winter uh, accessory for me. Yeah, but if you have a snowy winter, it's less an accessory for you for the, for the winter, but it will be available for you for the spring. So yeah, I think this is it. Um, I hope we didn't lose a lot of light here. It's getting, you know, darker. Let me think if I forgot something. Let me check on my notes that I made. No, I think I shared everything I wanted with you. I have some footage from this week's Mondays and also from Knit Night. You can see all the knitters, uh, their sunny scarves in the making, in the test making. Uh, and you, so you can enjoy and see how it works. Everyone started it this week. Everyone that, that um, came to the meeting this week started the sunny scarf. So you can see them all. So thank you so much for watching, for joining me in this episode. Uh, I will share footage from Mondays and the Neat Night at the end of this episode and also footage of the new socks that I wear. Just last one last thing before I wrap up. I shared all the modifications I did on my uh, cozy weekend socks, the socks I finished last week. Um, I shared all the mod modifications that I did on the pattern on last week's blog post. So if you are a, subs a subscriber, you already have it in your mailbox. If you are not, you can check it out in crochetobject.com. This is the last episode uh, from, from last week, from last Friday, uh, the last blog post. And there you can find all the details and all the modifications I did on the pattern. I'm still wearing them and I have to admit I didn't block them yet. I just can't stop wearing them. So they are not free to be blocked. They are busy, but it will eventually come. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me here. I will see you on the next episode. And until then, happy making everyone. <music>